There is a new kid on the block in the AI world and it's making the tech bros in Silicon Valley a little bit sad. It's called DeepSeek. This is a new AI tool that you can run locally on your computer, but today we'll be using it in their web interface. And it says here that DeepSeek R1 is now live and open source. And this is the important bit. It's rivaling OpenAI's Model 01. And so, I want to know, is this any good for academia and research? So down here you can see that for English it does well. I think Claude Sonnet does a little bit better. And then obviously Jack, Chat GPT down here does a little bit better. But code, it seems to do pretty well at code, math, and also Chinese. So I've given it some typical academic tasks and let's see how it did. The first thing I want to know is, is it any good at a literature review? So I asked it this. I said, I am a new PhD student with high hopes for the future. Oh, I love that sort of like early PhD stage where you just feel like everything's going to go so bloody well. And, you know, for some people it can, but there are sort of hurdles along. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. There are hurdles, but we get through them. That's the main point. All right. And my supervisor is still being nice to me. Ain't that the truth? Um, so that's good. And then this is something I always used to think about my supervisor, which was like, maybe they've had sex recently. I don't know if that makes me really weird. But sometimes my supervisor would come in and he would be all like, like just bouncy and fun and like awesome. And then other times, most of the time, he was just kind of a bit grumpy and upset. And I always used to think, oh, he probably had sex last night. <laughs> I think. Oh, I don't know what that makes me. But uh, anyway, let's let's carry on. Um, and then this is the important bit. I'm writing a literature review about carbon nanotubes and would love to get a structure to help me start it. So it thought for 14 seconds. And one thing I like about this is it kind of like talks to itself and you see this sort of like printed out in real time. Um, not super useful if you just want the results, but it's nice to know the thought process it's going through. Um, and then it says, here is a structure for your literature review on carbon nanotubes. Here it is. And and I can say like it's a good enough one. It doesn't go into as much detail as other tools that I've used like ChatGPT and even some of the like auto writers like um, uh, thesisai.io, they just know much more about like a structure, how it should be laid out. And this is like a good starting point, but I wouldn't lean on it as much as something like ChatGPT in my experience. But it's a good start, don't get me wrong. Um, and then I like this tips for execution. It's got all of this and I wanted to know can it actually sort of like provide me with uh, the paragraphs to fit under this structure oh I had to swallow then um, and here it is I'm two coffees into the morning and I need help as it has spiked my anxiety. I actually gave up coffee like a few years ago because I was sort of like going through the day being like, oh, I'm scared. Oh, what's that? And then like being okay and then I'd have another coffee and I'd be like, oh, something's wrong, but I don't know what. And I was like, you know what? I, I just think it's the coffee. Anyway, I gave up coffee. Um, I still drink English tea though, because obviously I'm English. Um, and then it says here, can you write section one for me? And then I gave it the section I want it to write. It thought for eight seconds. So you see it there and you watch it think um, and then it says this here's a polished anxiety free introduction section for your literature review oh thanks very much I want to be anxiety free um, and here it is okay nanotechnology blah 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 carbon nanotubes so uh is it good enough? Uh, it's a good enough start, but there are other tools that do it just as, well, not just as good, that actually do it better. So um, yeah, it's okay. Like it's an okay start. Um, it does give me some citations to include like this one, Nature Paper, Mechanical Strength, but you know, uh, is it a pass? It's a pass. It's like a C. C plus, if I was being generous. Um, so let's have a look at its other features. Can it redeem itself? So this is something you probably shouldn't use any AI tool, but it's finding references. There are better, more specific tools like Illicit, like Consensus, like SciSpace that are better at doing these things. But I wanted to know, can DeepSeek go and search the internet? Because it gives me that capability. Look, if I go uh, into Start Now, and then I go to here, and I click this button here on Search, and it goes off into the web to find me some magical science. And I was like, can it actually do that? So let's have a look to see what it says about peer-reviewed papers. And this is what I wanted to know. Um, the prompt was, I am sad because I've realized the only way to finish this PhD is to sit for hours writing on my own, powered by chicken sandwiches and energy drinks. And that was how I 
wrote my thesis. I'd sit down in um, a library. I'd get like a really big chicken sandwich that the library sold. It was awesome. And then two energy drinks. In, I'm not saying that that is a healthy thing to do, but I'd sit there and pound out the words, just smashing my hands onto the keyboard until I couldn't see past my nose. It was so intense, um, but something that everyone has to go through. Anyway, um, and uh, I hate it with all my heart is part of the prompt. Um, I didn't hate it with all my heart. The, I look back on it, I think it's like, you know, nostalgic to be like, oh, that was me sat in the library typing away. Um, yeah, I like it. Uh, would I do it now? Absolutely no way. Um, and then I said, anyway, could you give me recently published peer-reviewed papers on nanoparticles for OPV devices? It found 32 results, which you can click here and it opens up on the side. Um, and, you know, you can go through these. I think it's better just to go through these, like actually click on them, it sends you out to the web page, rather than sort of um, try to understand what it gave you. Because it was like, here are recent peer-reviewed papers. And I like that it knew recently it looked uh, from 2023 to 2025 um, and uh, yeah the, the, the thing is it said one and I thought this was the title of the paper but it wasn't it was lying to me because if I click down here it's a completely different one 19.5 inverted organic photovoltaics with record life anyway so it just makes things up for the title or at least maybe it's not the title it's unclear about what this li first little bit is all about but nonetheless it does provide you with real papers that you can click and go and find and read. We've got Science Direct, we've got Nature, we've got the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, we've got PubMed, so it does know where to go. Don't worry about this stuff. I mean, I, I say don't worry about this stuff. I'm being flippant. I'm being bloody flippant again. This sort of stuff was useful to me. This wasn't. Okay, title's not useful, um, but this key findings was actually. So even though, um, yeah, it didn't get the name right, it did provide me with the information that I would be interested in. So then I can click these and uh, yeah, it takes me off to the papers. So it can do it. There are better tools for doing it, but it can do it. And I think running this every so often would probably be useful in whatever large language model you want to use, ChatGPT or DeepSeek, but it at least can do it and it knows what a peer-reviewed paper is and it's tried its bloody best. It's got me 32 actually, so that's pretty good, isn't it? 32, that's better than ChatGPT. It's redeemed itself a little bit. Hmm, all right. Next thing. All right, the one thing I love about ChatGPT is its ability to work visually. It's got visual capabilities better than any other tool that I've tested. And DeepSeek, I wanted to know, can it do the same? ChatGPT can take an image and it can sort of like understand what's in it and it can help you sort of like work visually when writing in academia. That's what I love to do. I love to get the figures, plonk them in an order um, and then sort of say, is this a good order? Suggest an order. Anyway, then I, uh, yeah, can sort of like start writing that paper. But nonetheless, this is what I wanted to test is can it work well with figures? And I really pushed it to its limits, I think, because uh, this was the figure I gave it. You can click here and see that it's, uh, it's scanning electron microscope images of a non-planar and planar electrode. So I haven't told it what the size of these scale bars are, which is naughty of me. And uh, yeah, I've got these AFM images and a height profile as well. Let's see what it can do. And to be honest with you, I, I in hindsight, this was a little bit too much, even for any large language model. But uh, you know, it gave it a red hot go. And I said, I'm in the lab on a Sunday because my stupid supervisor wants us to work on the weekends. And do you know what, this is something I actually learn about some labs in the US, I think it was, they would have Sunday morning group meetings. And that was, I think, the supervisor trying to get people in the lab on a Saturday or Sunday. And I just think it's insane. Coming from like the UK and Australia, I, I, I can't imagine, you know, people go in on the weekends, I went in on the weekends sometimes, but to have a regular group meeting on a time when you're meant to be relaxing, hmm, I'm not sure I'm a fan of that, to be honest. Um, anyway, back to the prompt. I'm over this day and I need to know the main results from this figure, what are they? And I gave him that, that figure to refresh your memory, here it was. Uh, it wasn't very helpful to the, uh, you know, in, in terms of error bars and that sort of stuff, but it thought, and then it said, okay, these 
uh, figures likely compare the performance of single walled carbon nanotubes and silver nanowires. So yeah, it, it, it didn't really understand that it was an intermixed thing. And I feel like um, ChatGPT does better at like picking out the text here and really understanding how the text relates to the figures. So it's done really well at picking out the individual bits, but it hasn't done well at meshing them together like my transparent electrodes mesh single ward carbon nanotubes and silver nanowires. There we are. That was a good connection, wasn't it? Um, and okay, so down here it says, okay, maybe this, maybe this. And then I, you know, I realized that it hadn't really picked up on what it really was talking about. Um, and then it says, these are SEM and AFM images. I tried sort of like to prompt it in the right direction. It thought for 10 seconds and then it did a little bit better, um, but it was a tough ask anyway. But I do feel like, uh, chat GPT in all of my testing is just better at sort of like picking out the important parts from a figure. So yeah, chat GPT, I'm sorry, you still win. Um, and I don't know why I'm apologizing to chat GPT. Deep seek, I'm sorry, you're the loser here. <laughs> all right, let's test it to see if I can create a story structure for a peer reviewed paper from just the figures. I, I was, I, I'm happy with this next bit, I think. Spoiler alert. All right, so the next thing is, if I give it a load of figures, what does it do? Can it create a story? Does it understand how they all relate to each other? ChatGPT can do that really well. And if you go check out my course, which I'll link in the description and is here, um, I talk about how to actually use this visual kind of like paper writing to your advantage. And I, I just absolutely love that capability. All right then, so here we go. These are the figures I gave it. I gave it five figures and they sort of like vary from different schematics to different kind of like tables and graphs and you know different um, sort of crazy images you can see when they've uploaded it it's not high resolution which I don't know works in its favor or not who knows but uh, anyway it reduced the resolution um, but I'm not sure if it can see the full resolution one when it's working with it that's unknown but my prompt was I've been working on this project for ages and have these figures what is the best compelling research story that I can create with them my supervisor is at a conference getting drunk and dancing so I need your help <laughs> <laughs> I always loved, like, I always loved supervisors at a conference getting a little bit sort of loose, dancing on the dance floor, and it was kind of like a weird dad moment where you, like, look at them and you're like, oh, look at you go. Aren't you cute? Like, you go and get it. And then some of them turn into creeps, um, unfortunately, in my experience. Not not to me, but I know that, uh, yeah, there's just a, kind of some weird uh, vibes from some of them. They kind of like, they're, they're just a little bit more kind of like free and relaxed and they're out in the world getting drunk with younger people. And sometimes, uh, yeah, it gets a little bit weird. But uh, anyway, let's go back to this. If your supervisor's at a conference, just, uh, just stay away from them. That's my, you know, let them get drunk, let them do what they want. Just Stay away, stay away. That's my uh, professional research opinion. Um, okay, so here, compelling research story. So I gave it the figures and then it says, okay, try all this, uh, figure one, and then you could maybe try figure D. And so, you know, I was like, okay, well, that's good. Um, but I said, what order should the figures go in? It thought for 18 seconds. And then it said, figure one, figure three, figure four, figure two, figure seven. So overall, like it, it did well, and it didn't just rely on the figure captions to sort of like, um, you know, put them in order. I feel like it did sort of like understand the order in which it should go independent of how I, you know, labeled them. So that meant to me that there was a little bit more deeper understanding, but nonetheless, why this order works, logical flow, so we've got method, that, story arc, and emotional crescendo. Oh, oh, an emotional crescendo in my paper, stop it. Um, so yeah, I think it did well enough with that. I don't think it does as well as ChatGPT. Uh, once again, ChatGPT seems to know not only the figures, but how they all kind of mesh together, um, like my transparent electrodes. Uh, but there we are. Next thing, let's try it out. The last thing I wanted to know is can it help edit peer reviewed papers or parts of a paper? So here I gave it an abstract. I said, my office is full of people chatting and I can't concentrate. Can you help me with editing this abstract for publication in a peer reviewed paper? Make it better. Um, and then I gave it an abstract. It's funny, isn't it? Like with open plan offices, like all of the new trendy groups and labs have these open plan offices where it's like, yeah, it's great for the students. It's like a collision of ideas. But you know what? You know what the supervisors have? They have offices where they can close the door. Sometimes there's glass and it's weird and it's just like looking at a fish in a bowl and you just wave at them occasionally, give them a smile. Um, but 
they have offices because it's just better. Having your own office is just better. And uh, that's why all of this kind of like research leaders and anyway, it really annoyed me when, I, when it was like open plan office. Oh, it's so great. No, it's just noisy. It's just noisy and people are always around. And to be honest with you, when I was sort of like fed up in academia, I was the noisy one. I was the one chatting all the time, distracting people. So I'm part of the problem. That's what I've learned. All right then, back to the prompt. Um, in the prompt, I gave it my abstract draft and I wanted to know what it thought of it. And down here, it kind of like gave it another sort of like once over and was like, maybe change this stuff. And I was like, okay, good. Um, and it uh, offered key improvements. So overall, um, yeah, I think it did a good enough a good enough job at sort of just suggesting things uh, for improvement. So for writing, uh, I think Claude and ChatGPT could probably just do this just as well. There's no point moving to DeepSeek. So overall, I think DeepSeek is really fantastic because it's free, but not so great because it just doesn't doesn't deliver like the other ones do. So uh, keep an eye on this channel because I'll be reviewing more of them as they improve and maybe my opinion will change. All right then, I'll see you in the next video. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about Gemini AI. Is it better than ChatGPT? Maybe. Go check it out.